You're about to witness a seismic event. Hey, you're listening to Skitball. Huh? It's bags. Skit bags. Radio. Hello out there in the universe. Welcome to Skit Bags Radio. What's up, everybody? How hey, you guys what's doing? up, man? We got some uh, some awesome guests in the house here. I'm uh, Sailor Dev, and I got my co-host, Mr. C, up in the building. What's up, Mr. C? What it do, what it do. We have our uh, esteemed uh, guests here on the show. We got Skip Bags member Larry. What's up, Larry? What's Lafield? up, man? How's it going? Good to see you. And the one, the only, the epic, Ryan Carter. What's up, Ryan? Hey, what's going on? How's it going? How are you guys doing today? It's a fine Sunday. Yeah, it doing is. Great. Very good day today. Thanks for coming on, man. No problem. No problem. So uh, we kind of opened the show with uh, talk about TV and film. We usually break down a show, but um, today we're just gonna we're gonna kind of shoot the shit a little bit about the entertainment industry. All right, Larry? What are your, what are your thoughts? What's going on in the world with entertainment in Hollywood? Uh, well, I'm just not excited. I know Star Wars is coming out. Hey, boo. Well, <laughs> really, yeah. man, you're talking to a Star Wars nerd over here, bro. I know, man. It's I don't awesome. know. I got, I got Star, I got three Star Wars tats. Yeah. Do you? Wow. Well, I'm just okay. not excited, man, because you know, get tired of keep spending money on these movies. First, it was uh, the whole uh, uh, Thor. Yeah, it was okay. I Ragnarok. enjoyed it. And then we had the movie came out, the whole uh, the Justice League movie. Yeah, it was okay. It was alright. And now Star Wars. Yeah. So I keep spending money. Yeah. On stuff. Why am I doing this? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I could bootleg it, but I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? True. But it's getting old. True. You yeah. think it's because they're recycling films nowadays and not being creative and making new things, really? Yes, exactly. Well, they don't have a lot of original stories. I mean, think about all the big blockbusters. They're comic books or they're movies based on books. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Lord of the Rings and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's not like the 90s. when you got these original screenplays that yeah. we used to have, you know, like Jurassic Park. And, yeah. Well, I guess that was a book, too. But, you know, shit, there's other ones. Good Will Hunting, you know, stuff, shit like that. So I, I get what you're saying. They're, the bigger budgets, like it's... It's not worth paying 20 something dollars. I mean, by the time you get food and a drink, I mean, if you're going with a, a date or something, you'll drop 50, 60 bucks on a movie night, you know, easy. And, you know, are you going to go something that you can put on your TV at home and, you know, be able to just chill back and like, or, you know, if you're going to see Ragnarok or Justice League, I guess it makes sense to see it on the big screen. But if you're going to see, you know, a comedy, or something There's no reason no To pay reason. all that money yeah. And you know Netflix now This is a crazy thing And I don't know Why they're doing this But Netflix original movies Now are um, being released Simultaneously On the platform And in the theater Yes it oh. is That's yeah. fucking crazy wow. Why wouldn't you Release it in the theater first exactly. Get that run yeah. Get that overhead Because if I got a choice yeah. You know I'm gonna curl up With a beer and a blunt yeah. And just sit on my couch And yeah. watch this fucking movie Then yeah. go on, You know All the way to the theater For something like that Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Stupid. I'm just bored, man. I'm bored with the with the whole Hollywood thing. So I kind of mm. miss the independent, mm. creative projects. What would you like to see? Mm, maybe even a like I say a sci-fi movie that has semi decent budget. With did you a, see Passengers? I did see that. What did you think? I enjoyed it, but it it didn't do well. It did, not commercially. No, hmm, I didn't look at the numbers. I oh. liked it. I thought it was a good. You know, it's very unique writing and, and you know, having what. Two, three characters for the whole fucking movie. Yep, yep. There's no one cares. cares. But why didn't mm. it do well? Mm, like I think, like what what Devin stated, just people want the the traditional comic book mm, guaranteed mm. Well, content. The, is it the easy recognition. Yeah. They got the budget for the marketing to let people know about the movies. It's not that. Mm-hmm. Just, just people know what Spider Man mm-hmm. is. You know yeah. what Superman is. You don't mm-hmm. know what Passengers is. Like, what is that? Yeah, that's true. I mean, how many Spider Man movies is it that have the same story? It's a different spin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Homecoming was yeah, the like, fucking like fifth or sixth yeah. one already. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, but that's the, the goal. Same story. Yeah, I was. was Tells the same story over and over again. Okay, Peter Parker. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I guess it's like you know when you know we were kind of talking this on another episode, but I think that you know now that these are these big budget, it's like an event to go to the movies. You're dropping fifty, sixty bucks. It's like you're going to the theater. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like the casual. Oh, what are you doing Friday? Well, I don't know. Let's go check out a movie where you go buy yeah. a ticket for like seven bucks or something. Get some popcorn. Like those days are gone. Yeah, yeah. And that is a shame. I'm just point too. I, yeah. you know. I think that the future is going to be video on demand, Netflix, Hulu, because, you know, I think it's 80, 70 or 80% of all the traffic on the internet is now done through mobile. 
Yes, it so is. people are designing shows specifically to be viewed on mobile. Which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Imagine that a decade ago. You never would have thought, like, oh, I'm watching this new TV show on my phone. No. Or on my tablet. You know, where I'm going. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's kind of the future where these big theaters are, you know, have to compete with that. And you know what Disney's doing? Disney's kind of fucked. I love them, but with the Star Wars thing, they're screwing over a lot of the small cinemas. Yeah, I heard mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So what they did is they require a certain percentage of the ticket sales. Mm-hmm. And if... And they require uh, that theater to run the Star Wars film for X amount of time, for like oh. over a month, I believe. Oh. Oh. And if you're a, a small theater with one theater in the Midwest, mm-hmm. you know, a small town, you know, a town of a thousand people, everyone's going to see that movie the first week or two. Yeah, yeah. So wow. you, they can't, they st- to be able to show and have the rights to show the movie, mm-hmm. they still have to have it playing. And that theater's going to lose money and get yeah. put out of business because no one's going to come and see Star Wars five times exactly. in a small <laughs> theater. So they're, they're flexing their muscle about that. And, you know, that I think is a shame because mm-hmm. you, at the end of the day, like, come on, Disney, you got the merch. You got everything. Do you really need those other scents? Uh, you know, shows. come on. Yeah, you weird. got Pixar. Yeah. You got. We just got kind of Cars Three just came out, yeah. and you know that world was already rendered. You didn't have to spend no money on that, other than playing the actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything was already set up. Like Jesus. Yeah. Some- well, hopefully it changes sometime soon, man. We'll see. Well, hopefully, well, you know what? With skid bags, we're doing a lot of different uh, shows and TV shows and a bunch of stuff. We'll change that, guys, won't we? Hell well, that- yeah. Let's put it out there. We'll change. Well, that's the goal of us. Skit bags is what we want to do. We want to bring back some new independent do films like the Head Themes film, like the Scramble film that just came out, like the other stuff. Larry makes like 50 daggone independent films a week in Atlanta in his free time <laughs> just when he's yeah. sleeping and shit. You Bro, know what I mean? Like so it's every... out there. We just need to get it in people's face so they can see it. For sure. Carl, I was going to piggyback on what you just said. Larry, You, I see on fucking Facebook everywhere, like you got a different movie every week. <laughs> You're fucking, I love it. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, you have to, man. You know, I think just uh, in this day and age, you can't just sit back and wait around for a check. You need, mm-hmm. to, you need to create your brand. What we do is skip back and then get people to want to come to you. So yeah. that's why now I have my, my business um, associate, friend, boss, Ryan Carter, who's sitting right here. Diversifying your assets, yeah. 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 Oh, you got to. You got yeah. to. How, how did you two jokers meet up? Yeah, tell us that story. Uh, well, the story was actually, um, it was my birthday. And so I was, it I was came drunk. as a gift to him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. The yeah. best things do, dude. <laughs> exactly, man. My script, the same story. I found out about my movie that I wrote that screenplay about on my birthday. Two of them. Oh, see? Like, that's how it happens. Anyways, well, continue. Was, well, um, I was drinking. I was pretty pretty tipsy. My birthday but my bond like my brain still is working and thinking about business so uh, um, uh, an associate gave me a, a case of cbd water so i'm like oh what, what is this mm-hmm. so like i open my eyes like okay it's gotta be something besides just liquor i'm like i want to meet that <laughs> on meet the owner who's the owner he was like well uh he's uh this guy named ryan call him now call him now <laughs> and he kept procrastinating i'm like you need to call him <laughs> call him now and he called him. I went, met with Ryan. He has a whole lab. Went to his lab. I was just baffled watching him just making formulas and, and, and different drinks. And well, fucking Heisenberg stuff. up in it here. It was crazy. Dude. Breaking Bad style. I like crazy. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's kind of like that. Yeah. So, Ryan, you know, why don't you tell everyone out there what your business is, what you do, how you got started in it? Okay. Well, um, my business is helping people. With products, I'm hmm. just put it that way, because the reason why I'm saying it because I got tons of different avenues, meaning from uh, what pet food, hair products, uh, sex products. So it's <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> all right, all right. I'm you know, I, I can't just want two of them. Now. You just can't put me in a <laughs> beverage, and that's what everybody wants to do because this is really our first product to the world is going to be the beverage line. Hmm. Um, nice. And basically how I got into it, I just have a big heart to help people and make things easier. Mm. So um, the story behind Ghost itself was a, a friend of mine introduced me to the cannabis oil. And I'm, I'm one, I don't smoke. I, mm. I never smoked before. So when he showed it to me, he's giving me the story like, hey, man, this is going to really get you get you messed up out here. This stuff is pure and this, that, and other. And I just so happened my mother-in-law, she was um, dying from cancer, blood cancer. And she loved, she stayed with me at the time, 
and she loved my cooking. So when I saw that oil, he's telling me about, oh, it's going to do this, you do that. In my mind, I'm thinking, hmm, I could put that in my barbecue sauce. Oh, hell yeah. And she wouldn't know, you know what I'm saying? So um, I took it home, and I played with it, put in barbecue sauce, and I made another drink. I actually made this drink one time, and I haven't made it again. It was, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm scared to even say what it is because someone might try to make it. I'm making but, it um, tonight. <laughs> say that shit. <laughs> so I made this drink in this barbecue sauce, and um, I gave her the barbecue sauce, and I noticed her reaction was different. She was more upbeat. She was more, like, lively. And um, gave it to her. She never knew. And that's how the name came to me to basically say, I ghosted. Mm. So I'm nice. saying she never saw it. She couldn't taste it. She didn't know. Mm. So that's the premise of ghosts. And then from there, my mind just went into, what else can I do with this product? You know mm. what I'm saying? And then I'm now past the stage of cannabis to where now I'm dealing with other uh, ingredients that, can, you know, basically make your life better. Mm. Yeah. And um, learning new different ways to put it in your products that I kind of feel like... Um, it should be done. I mean, it, to me, the, the premise of the water is real simple to me because it's like you take an aspirin and you drink the water. Yeah. So why not we just take the steps out and just put it in the water? You know yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. It should be in everything, it sounds like. You yeah, know? so I mean, um, and then I'm trying to cover uh, your daily, what you do every day. I mean, a lot of people don't really know this, but the intake of cannabis, if you get like three to 500 milligrams on a daily intake, it can heal and prevent you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I don't smoke, so how would I make sure that somebody got to smoke all day to get that in, in, mm-hmm. in, in their system? So I just, the first step is food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I put it in your salad dressing, in, in your peanut butter, in, in, in your everyday foods, and I don't mess up the integrity of the taste, mm-hmm. then I'm winning. Mm-hmm. So basically, I'm trying to yeah bring ghosts to the world. Well, that's my mission. Nice. That's beautiful, man. Nice. And I love how you said your business is helping people. Yeah. That is, you know, because first and foremost, you know, we're all trying to, you know, do our thing and, and you know, make a little money and do and But by having that philosophical belief, your your heart's in the right place. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's from a foundation. That's a really good place to start. And, you know, you know the, correct me if I'm wrong. I was going to ask you this. Um, when you consume THC orally like um eating it or ingesting it doesn't it when it gets processed by your liver doesn't it change to a different compound that's more psychoactive than inhaling it it does but there's different forms like there's nanotechnology that we have that breaks down that oil to where it actually absorbs more into your body so for instance like the water that's what the water has and enhancements of Hey, like hey there's nanotechnology in this water. You putting robots in me, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, thank you for the water. Yo, you, you, Ryan came came in the clutch, man. He brought us a whole bag of goodies here. You want to tell tell us what you brought, man, right. so yeah. everybody could uh, know what was up. I mean, well, there's there's two things you have in the room. You have ghosts in the room, and you also have another. Uh, you have the T eight. Well, ghosts is the CBD side. Mm-hmm. So, ghosts is my everybody, kids to adults. You know, saying it's the CBD side, and then. And CBD is non-psychoactive, exactly, correct? Exactly. Yeah. And then the TAC side is the now side. That's what's going on now. And I kind of wanted to play in that space and give everybody a good time. So I had to make dreams. So mm. I got your ghost dreams today. It's so good. <laughs> so, this cherry one is bomb. I'm staying, yeah. You try that cherry one? Yo, I'm, I'm going to pop this right yeah. now. Hey, yeah. this has, cheers. Cheers, fellas. Yeah. And then you got to try the, um, yeah, that's the uh, the lime one is delicious. Too. To, yeah, I see and he had like a green one over there. When, uh, yeah, you got to try And then here's pineapple. Oh, my right. God, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. pineapple. Mm. Yeah, 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 see, this, is, this is dangerously good. It's also a, a drink enhancer. You can put in your water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's really what it is. It's really yeah. made for that. So, I mean, I've had it put in ice cream, the milk. Yeah. To uh, It yeah. goes in anything. You yeah. put it in the water. You put it in the water. You put it in the water, it's going to work. And shake it up, and it do what it do. And what flavor is this that you handed me? That's, that's like an energy shot. Pineapple. Pound, that's so. pineapple. So, the like funny it. part about it is, yeah. it, you know, this lean thing is going around. Mm-hmm. And that's not lean. I didn't make it for lean. I actually Sipping made that on that for, dream. Yeah. Sipping on that dream club. <laughs> so I literally made that for the to go after the alcohol game to where it's like, look, um, you know, you drink that, you have a good time. Yeah. Less, of, less effect of, of badness of alcohol. So, yeah. you know, you still maintain your integrity of you being you. You know what I'm saying? You have the TAC. Yeah. You feel good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's going to relax you. Mm. So that's really your martini 
You know what I'm saying? Your THC martini. Then you yeah. can... And it's good for you and shit. You yeah. know, knock out a cold on your ass. Yeah, yeah. Dude, this is this is so, brilliant. Cause so you, you tasted it over there, tried it. That's just some water. Well, see, guys, so, okay, just FYI, you all might be fucked up in like the next like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> Dude, I look nice, at, what was nice, this, like 250? Nice. Just to make sure. Jeez. <laughs> just to make sure. But yeah, man, I mean, it's it's the, it's the um, strong product. We started with um, cherry, and now we have a variety of different, different flavors, and um, it, the streets are really taking it really, really good right now for yeah. dreams, and that people are looking for it. But um, it's finna. Um, that's that's my um, crazy side. I love the I like drink enhancement because I worked for a couple of distilleries, and I used to be a mixologist, and I probably probably an alcoholic, probably still am, but. Uh, I noticed that, you know, I stopped drinking for about two and a half years. And during that time period, everything was more beneficial in my life. I lost weight. I was healthier. I looked mm-hmm. better. I felt cleaner. And uh, cannabis and THC was probably the only thing that allowed me to stop drinking and make mm-hmm. that transition. I quit smoking tobacco. Mm-hmm. Like, without THC and cannabis, I would not have been able to do that. I think I would have probably cracked under pressure and, you know, because I was, you know, self-medicating for stress and, you know, going out and having fun and partying. But then, you know, when you get wasted and blackout drunk, you exactly. you make a fool of yourself, you yeah. make a fool of others. You, you break your foot. Yeah, no yeah. shit. That's what, that's what happened with Carl over here. He was drunk and what happened? You threw your keys up? Uh, yeah, I threw playing my keys catch. on a sign that was 15 feet high and I monkeyed up there like I was on that ninja show. And when I landed, you know, like I, like I was Mike. You was drunk. And right? Off a dunk. Yeah, 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 but I was like a drunk Jordan or wow. shit. You know, I was wow. hanging, wow. and I came out like, see, ha, ha. If you would have been and high, then, you probably wouldn't have did all that. So, man, <laughs> right? I just like, nah, I'm yeah. not going to try. You're like, oh, man, fuck, I, fuck it. I just yeah. sleep outside tonight. Just fuck it. <laughs> Well, yeah, no. <laughs> I love, I, I, first of all, I'm a big supporter of this industry. And if I had to choose between alcohol and cannabis, I go cannabis all the way. And, yeah. you know, we were talking before the show um, about, you know, films and what we were going to kind of discuss. And I mentioned, have you ever heard of the movie Reefer Madness? Mm-hmm. And Carl, have you heard? Have the, you seen you Reefer the Madness? The school one where they yeah. try to scare people and they like make monkeys smoke a lot of weed and tell them that, you know, don't hang with jazz singers and stuff. Yep. And, yeah. The black and, and white film. Yeah. So back oh, in yeah, it was real black and white, real black and white. <laughs> back, it was I think it came out in 1936 or 1937. I'm pretty sure it's 37. And basically, for all those out there who've never heard of Reefer Madness, go look it up, go watch it. It's a great uh, reference to that time period in the culture. And what this movie is is it's about a all American high school jock that um, gets suckered into smoking weed for the first time, and then he goes crazy. He rapes somebody, he murders somebody, he runs somebody over with a car. And, you know, it, it basically, the, the philosophy was like, you know, smoking weed makes you go crazy and do all these things. But it had nothing to do with the drug. It had nothing to do with THC. What that film was all about and the politics of the air had everything to do with hemp. Mm. And it's a, it's a crazy story that if you look back, I mean, you can find it on YouTube for free. But if you look at it, you're like, wow, people, they made this and people actually believe this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But that's like how and why we got here. As a country, and now yeah. Yeah. all these things are being, you know, brought back to the surface because yeah. of legalization, yeah. recreation in states. Yeah, and I think that that's a, you know, that's well, a big point is well, to figure out how we got here. Well, yeah, J.P. Morgan and all those guys, you know, they owned all the oil companies, they owned all the clothing and the cotton and all those industries. So not only was hemp good for clothing and other things like that and furniture, you could also make it a biofuel uh, that was usable for cars and it's going to be competitive. Uh, with gasoline so all the dudes just like they did with the crash in the 20s having all those margin calls done by pulling all their money in at the same time they did the same thing made newspapers made reefer madness got people all scared and got weed made illegal really just to keep them from competing with gasoline companies yeah dude it was dude you took the words right out of my mouth that was excellent carl thank you i was telling ryan about this before uh before we you got here but yeah you're exactly right it was andrew mellon and john rockefeller and william william randolph hearst those mm-hmm. three are the ones who really mm-hmm. put get, the hammer mm-hmm. down and yeah. it was because uh in the 1930s a machine called the decoriator came out and that was like the cotton gin to industrial harvest hemp so all oh. these industries like Rockefeller and Mellon and all these guys were like, oh shit, we got to make this illegal or else we're going to have the legs cut out from under us, no. you know? And it's so it's so funny because nobody really talks about the hemp aspect. 
mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone, especially now in culture, it's mm-hmm. all about legalization for the medicine mm-hmm. and the recreation of THC. Yeah. And that's that's great. I, I'm totally supportive of that. I think the um, anti-cancer benefits, uh, yeah. the getting off for me, getting off alcohol and yeah. stuff, like all the, the benefits drastically outweigh yeah. the negative. Like the oh, yeah. CBDs in the ghost water situation. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Ryan, what'd you pour us right here? Oh, 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 toast yeah. everybody. Well, yeah. tell, us what, tell us what this is, that brother. That is a watermelon lemonade. That's a TAC Dreams drink right there. Oh, that is a, oh yeah. Let's go. Yeah. TAC and Fuse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey. That's a Everyone, new, that's new one that's coming out that yeah. I'm working on. So, it's yeah. Bob. It's really good. Yeah, that's a watermelon lemonade. You smell it? Oh my God, it's delicious. I think y'all should call it red. <laughs> red, yeah, it was so great. Like, yeah. get, that's that red, cuz. So, yeah, we got um, I got some other stuff here for you, like some tea. Yeah, just get some background pictures. I want, yeah. I want to get a picture What's of this, this right here. Is that the lemonade? This is no, the... that's actually a tea. Oh, Ooh. what? Strawberry, strawberry jasmine yeah, take tea. Take it home. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. It's got a lot of crazy oddball flavors. So. Nice. I mean, without giving too much away, this is these are in tea bags yeah, already, and you yeah, just make yeah, it like hot tea, hot tea yeah. and the tea itself is infused. Yeah, that's kinda. actually raw tea. That's not no powder. That's actually raw, one hundred percent organic tea wow. with, with your with your cannabis in it. Try so there's there's nothing, no sugar, nothing added. Just this is what it is. Brilliant. Take it home. And this yeah. Is perfect. This is, yeah. And this is in perfect time with the Cal legalization and situation. Are you oh, from yeah. Cali too? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Cali. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just, I'm just looking oh, at it in a Cali. different, different stance. I mean, because I'm, I mean, I guess I'm not a smoker. Yeah. So I mean, um, you just want to, I just want to make products for people to, you know, basically enjoy it yeah. and not, not be blown out and, and tore up because there's some stuff out there that I've seen is like yeah. 4,500. Uh, MGs, I'm like, ooh, that's that's that is yeah. an insanely oh, yeah. high I, dose. I, I, that's so high. What's the name of that brand? And could you write that down? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's some people out there that really go on the extremes. Do you know who Joey Diaz is, the stand-up yeah. comedian? All right, he's a stand-up comic and uh, re- pretty well known. Friends with like Joe Rogan and like the Comedy Store and like that whole c- crew of people. But Joey is notorious for he has a podcast and on his podcast when he has guests on. He'll take uh, an edible that is like a thousand milligram edible and he'll take mm. it out of the wrapper and he'll put it into like a hundred milligram one and he'll give it oh, to people. Oh, wow. And oh, I'm oh, like, wow. what the fuck, bro? Why yeah, did yeah, you ever do really, that to yeah. somebody? Especially somebody who doesn't like yeah. ever partake. Oh, yeah. Like, such a nice Paul, dude, Polly Shore was on his podcast and he did that to Polly Shore. And Polly Shore goes, uh, he was talking about it after. He goes, dude, after 15 minutes, I couldn't, I had to go. Yeah. He's like, I just left. He goes, Joey, you got me fucked up, man. I can't even finish the rest of this podcast. Don't even let this air. Yeah. And I was like, that, you know, obviously, medically, you're going to be fine. Yeah, There's yeah. never in the history of humanity. Yeah, it's not a good feeling. You'll just go no. to sleep. That's the no, worst no, no. case scenario, sleep. Yeah, it's not a good well, feeling. if you're yeah. that intoxicated, I don't even know if you can go to sleep. It's like you have to kind of ride it out yeah, you until. Do. You do. You do. Yeah. You have to ride it out. For some reason, you know, I feel like singing for some reason. I don't know why. Right? Yeah. There you go. Am I high? I don't know. Yeah. 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 For your your personal favorite of all these of this line of stuff that you're creating, what is your individual personal favorite to to partake and consume? Uh the tea. This tea? Oh that that no, tea the right tea, there? The tea, yeah, the yeah, tea. The tea. I have a lemon lavender tea okay. that no, uh, I'm sorry, this is Larry. No, it's it's a sex enhancer. He's lying. Oh, uh, well, see, I was the sex enhancer. Tell him, dude. Tell him. Tell him what you yeah. can. Go in, man. Dude, go baby. in. Drop tell some him. knowledge. Yeah. Tell him. Yeah, yeah. I got a product. Um, I'm fighting with the names, so I guess I'm gonna say it today to the world. There's two names out there. Mm. It, it's called Cock Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> and the new name we came up with just this week, a couple days ago, is gonna be called Loaded Dice. Oh, so those are gonna be uh, two of the names, and um, it's actually in a shop form, just like how you guys see these bottles. Oh, nice! And it's to where you know, um, my premise of it is, you know, women have fake hair, weaves, and this that, and another. So I just made us to where we have our little fake uh, <laughs> little help. So where it's like, you take a shot within fifteen minutes, you go do your thing, and wow. you're a champion in there. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? So, how long does that last? It lasts uh, for a good minute. About well, four days, dude. <laughs> Four days. Four days. Yo, I'm, I'm, four days. 
Dude, I'm, I'm gonna get that just to, just just because. Yeah, just, that yeah, sounds yeah, like fun. Yeah. Just to walk around, just hard as shit for four days. Just don't yeah, do nothing nah, with it. And shit. Nah, it's not like that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna do you to where you'll be able to perform, and then you'll be you'll be all right. No side effects of the other nice. stuff that's out there in the streets. But yeah, nice. dude, there's been... so much unhealthy shit out there. You ever seen those like what do they call the rhinos and the shit they sell at the gas station? Yeah, you yeah, seen yeah. that? Bro, you can like fucking have a heart attack from that yeah, shit. That is, so, you don't even know what's in it. Yeah, there's a lot of caffeine base in that stuff to get the heart going. Yeah, yeah. They, they do that just to get the blood flowing to get the, yeah, there's a lot of scientific stuff to know. But yeah, that stuff right there is kind of like scary. Now like, tell them mm-hmm. about the one you got where you kind of, you apply it to the lady. Oh, you want to yeah, tell about Yeah, tell them about, yeah, about that one. So, we have a sex lube. Nice. That no. only yeah. has a TAC. And the CBD one. Mm. So I have, um, it's funny, the CBD one is actually giving me some good results with some ladies that are having issues. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I actually have uh, issues down there. Um, it's working very well. That's going to be a promising product. And the TAC one, that's one, it goes together with the male enhancement. And mm. I'm going to do something wow. else extra. I'm not going to say over air, but I'm doing something that's going to change that game to where um, it'll be one product that, him and her will be able to enjoy themselves with. So, yeah, wow. Damn, like a like a McBLT, like the hot side oh, hot and the cool side yeah. cool, and they well, come nah, together and make some shit. Nah, uh. It's going to be, it'll be <laughs> one, but, but you got to say, that's two products that you had to make one. I'm going to have one that in that one bottle, you'd be yeah. like, whoa, it works for her and it works for him oh, in that shit. same bottle. And it's going to be, okay. you got to mix them. It's already in there. Carl, so, only <laughs> you could compare sex to food, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, come on. Are, are they not equally yeah, important? They are, yeah, I've, I've had some females tell me, oh, some good food. I'll give you some good sex. I'm like, yeah, oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah they go together. Yes, yeah, so, right. So, explain how you apply it because you didn't tell them that point. Well, you apply it to the, the female's uh, vagina. So, basically, you apply it in there, and then within a matter of minutes, she'll be um, feeling high. Is it like a liquid? Nice. It's a sex loop. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's an actual okay. lubricant. Oh, okay. <laughs> so nice. It's, uh, it's, called, nice. it's called Magic O. Mm, so like, magical. You know, I was half expecting right, you to right, be right, like, right. it's called pussy right. juice. No, no. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, so they get their their orgasm. So it's called magic O, and you know nice. it's going to be a lot of people that's going to enjoy it. And um, mm. I'm looking to probably, I'm actually being hunted down to uh, put it out there now. There's some companies that's approaching me. And they want me to do private labeling for them. Nice. There's a couple of porn stars that um. Hmm? Are looking to endorse it too also so. Dude that's your end right yeah, there yeah, yeah. Hell yeah What better way Than one of the biggest industries In the world of Definitely most internet traffic yeah. I fucking It's used for porn yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Yeah You know and How do you know that? <laughs> well, I'm one of the biggest perpetrators. Uh, perpetrators oh, okay. of that, yeah, well, yeah, dude. Good. I like me some porn. Who it doesn't? It's all good. It's you all got good. cannabis and sex. I mean, it goes. And again, that's my TAC side. You know, what I'm saying so. You heard me say I made a CBD uh, sex loop for the healthy yeah. side. So I mean, I, I, I got them. You know, say again. Like I told you, when you asked me, but I'm, I'm here to help. See, that's a beautiful thing. And you know, THC just makes everything better. It makes sex better. It makes music better. It makes food better. You know, but if you're drinking. You know, I don't know about you fellas, but there's been some nights when I was just had that little whiskey dick, you know, a little, yeah, little yeah. too well, drunk. See, there you go. You ain't got to worry about that with my product. Exactly. Exactly. You That's why I'm looking go. forward to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You good right. to go. Yeah, you good to go with the cock diesel. That, that, <laughs> that cock, cock diesel. Is that name is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's, it's uh, we, we have quite a few, quite a few things, man. Mm-hmm. Quite a few coming out. Did you ever um work with any athletes? Because of uh, CBD and recovery from athletic stuff or THC? Well, Larry had been drinking his dream, so uh, I'm a little uh, tipsy here. (laughs) I know. I've been feeling that, bro. This will get me giggles. I love this. Thank you. We're going to drink some more of this shit. Tell them the the story where you gave some uh, water to uh, Golden State Warriors. Yeah. A player has it, and um, uh, his aunt, she's actually uh, formulated with me on some stuff right now. The player got it. He's using it for, you know, rehab. You know, he's after playing in aching and pains. And he's gotten, he forwarded it to another athlete in, the, uh, in another state who's also using it. Um, and he used it to um, <laughs> to recover and get back, well, 
feel we can't go too far. Well, they say a lot of um, you know, the pro athletes, the reason they get caught smoking weed, a lot of the pro basketball people, you know, they all smoking weed like the chief Robert Paris. He got pounds. They ain't calling the chief for no damn reason. Yeah. But they said the reason that they really smoked was to deal with the pain. Oh yeah, yeah. Since you had to play every other night, and they didn't like the pills, they didn't like the aspirin, they didn't like the this, they didn't like the that. It was their natural way of kind of healing up, you know, before the next game. Yeah, know? well, it, it's good. The CBD part is the inflammation. So they build mm. up a lot of inflammation yep. when they're playing as athletes. Yeah. But um, don't get me wrong. I've, I've already met with some owners and some um, owners of NFL teams. Oh, yeah. The owners probably them. want the cocaine version, huh? <laughs> 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 well, the conversation we had was they, they basically broke it down to say um, we're owners. And these are our players make the money. We got to make sure they're in top, you know, top shape. Absolutely. So they wanted to meet me because they've heard of all the products I have, and they're like, "Well, you know, um, we like where you're going with this." Mm-hmm. And right now, they're trying to lobby to get it passed and get it taken care of. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going into a depth of my team, but I have a, a team that you guys will be hearing from um, of professionals behind the product. So this isn't something that you know just made up in a garage and. Somebody's growing out their yard, and mm-hmm. now this is real. This this stuff is really made high end mm-hmm. with um with some high integrity. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So the NFL reached out, talked to some of the owners, and they're like, "Hey, we know that your product's gonna be safe, it's secured, and, and everything's good." So yeah, man, nice. you got the NFL hitting you up, yeah. owners, dude. Yeah. You know that's a big thing amongst uh, football players because they're so physically strained and because it's so contact. Such a contact sport The recovery is a huge thing I know I follow MMA a lot And that's a huge thing Among fighters yeah. Fighters love I mean They It's technically not allowed By USADA Which is the drug testing agency For fighters So before a fight And after a fight They're tested I mean that's why Nick Diaz Nate Diaz I'm sorry Just got uh, I think suspended For a year or something Because oh. he was After his fight with Connor, He was In the press conference Smoking a vape pen yeah. mm. And he was just like Yeah oh, fuck it I don't care I'm fucking Nick Diaz Whatever, I just made a million dollars. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do to be healthy. Yeah. Like you know, I just got my face pounded in. I don't really care about not fighting for a year. But I, it's so it's the stigma. Yeah. That's that's the only, the science doesn't it, the science supports the need for it when it comes to athletics. It's yeah. the cultural stigma that I think we as a country and as a society need to get over. It goes back to what you said about that original film. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying it was mm-hmm. presented that way to say, "Hey, don't go in that room because mm-hmm. it'll kill you." Yep. So it's like everybody been scared of it, and now we find it out. Because when I found out about it, like I told you when I first met you, I didn't think about touching it. Mm-hmm. And then when I started doing my studies on it, I was kind of upset. I was like, "This has been around, and this could have helped a lot of people." Yeah, yeah. you know, it's kind of yeah. like that's kind of dirty, man. When you think about mm-hmm. it, it's like it's there, it grows just naturally, and it's mm-hmm. like this is. But they want us on the man made stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like the opiate, yep. the, the, the purpose sex, and and all well, that you different. Stuff, you know, what yeah. saying just a different stuff out there. Yeah, it's yeah. about the money. Well, Big pharma, purpose. man. You know, mm-hmm. that's that. They're probably the that and law enforcement are the two biggest lobbies against the legalization of cannabis. I mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. I, I could be wrong, but I'm mm-hmm. from what my research is doing, and it makes sense because you know law enforcement is going to lose jobs. You know, private prisons. Yeah, you know, I think half on. of all yeah. nonviolent. Yeah, offenses drugs. in prisons right now are from marijuana. Yeah, drugs. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that. We are the we have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. Yeah. And we, the fact that we privatize prisons blows my yeah. fucking mind yeah. because then you're just dollar signs trying to stack people in there. It's yeah. a business yeah. that you're running. You're not yeah. doing a civil service. Yeah. I've yeah. had a conversation with a, a team owner and he was like, I'm selling my team. I'm like, oh, okay, what are you going to go into? And he's like, I'm going into prisons. I was like, wow. He's like, it makes more money than the team. I'm like, wow, you got a very successful team. He's like, I'm going to go buy prisons Jesus. is where the money's at. I'm like, wow. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. this is what I, I, I told you. We talked about Reefer Madness. I've written a screenplay that I'm raising money for now. And, um, about the origins of Reefer Madness. It's about mm-hmm. Reefer Madness was based on a real crime that occurred in Tampa in 1933. A kid by the name of Victor Lakata. <laughs> Dude, all right, so crazy story. This right. kid named Victor Lakata, 20 years old, went crazy and murdered his whole family in the middle of the night with an axe. The police came the next day and they found a joint roach at the scene of the crime. So they blamed the whole thing on weed. Harry Enslinger found out about it. It got spun into the movie and the propaganda, and that's why weed is illegal, basically. Mm. But I grew up in Tampa. Uh, people who listen know that. I've talked about it before. And I went, my high school, uh, one of my best friends is a distant relative of Victor Licata. Mm. So on my 
think it was like 26th birthday. I was playing poker with like five of my friends, just hanging out at the house. Not, you know, we weren't going crazy. And the topic of Reefer Madness came up. And my buddy's like, oh, yeah, you've never heard of Victor Licata? And I was like, no, what the fuck is this? I went down the rabbit hole, bro. I went mm. to, to TPD headquarters and got the police report. I went to University of South Florida and got the genealogy for the family. Mm. First of all, his parents were first cousins. So all of his family was in and out of mental institutions. Yeah. So he was just fucking crazy to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and secondly, like there was no direct evidence about the marijuana, you know, roach at the at the scene of the crime. So I'm like an investigative journalist for six months, and I go, "You can't make this shit up. This has got to be a movie. How do we tell this story?" I was like, it, I was sitting around Thanksgiving the year after that. Not that fall, but like the next year after I had like written a good portion of the story. Mm. And I was telling my family about this and my uncle and my mom, none of them use cannabis. And they, they don't care. They'll, they'll like support it. They were kind of indifferent, basically. Mm. But I started talking about how and why we got here and the origins of this story. And everyone was like, what? Mm. Are you fucking kidding me? It was almost like they were pissed off. Exactly. Yeah. Like they've been tricked. Exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. why, you know, what I want, I love the fact that you love to help people because that's one of my big MOs. I, I want to make this movie not to make a million dollars, not to be famous. I don't even want, I'm not even putting myself in it. I don't know. You know, I just want it to be made because I think it can change the culture. Exactly. Yeah. I really think that if Americans watched a film, back then and it changed their minds exactly. to cause this yeah if we could take that same story and tell the truthful exactly. side of it it can reverse the the process mm -hmm. you know the power of entertainment is so profound you know think about how many uh how many things in in film and music have influenced politics and culture from like the 60s to the 70s you know all those things like culture Politics follow culture mm -hmm. You know I don't think it's the other way around No 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 Far so, from it Right mm -hmm. So if you create the culture And you change people's minds The legalization And the economics Will follow through I mean Imagine Hemp can be used For so many different things THC can be used For so many different things mm -hmm. But imagine get, Not being dependent On any petroleum or oil anymore mm -hmm. No yeah. more war on the No more going to the Middle East mm -hmm. You know People are not getting Locked up in jail you know, this big pharma is going to take a hit. Private prisons are going to take a hit. The oil industries are going to take a hit. There's going to be a lot. But, you know, I noticed you were driving a Tesla out there, by the way. <laughs> that is a sick fucking Tesla. I like those rims, bro. <laughs> you got that right, aftermarket right, black right. on red? Dude, that was so fucking that's ill. But it's kind of like that theory. Like, I don't care what the status quo is. We want to do what's better for the world. And that's one of Elon Musk's philosophies. Exactly. When he started Tesla, yeah. he goes, look, he, to his shareholders, he goes, look, don't expect to make a profit right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Like, we're doing this because we need to, as a humanity, needs to end our dependence on fossil fuels. Yes. So it, it all ties in. And I think by you creating uh, product lines like this and you reaching out to our NFL, reaching out to you and, you know, all these, all these endeavors where you're, you're hitting it from so many angles. Mm -hmm. I think that as a, it's not just one thing. You're, you're going horizontal and vertically it's ghost. and you're, yeah. it's supposed to be around you everywhere. It's ghost. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Where, where, where are you guys at right now? Like as far as like, where can people find your stuff? Well, we, I guess I can announce it. We actually, um, my CEO is Terry Finch. Who? Terry, Terry Terrence Finch. Mm -hmm. Terrence Finch used to be uh, an executive of Coca Cola and mm. Pepsi. Wow. Well, and there you go. I have uh, Ken Ramirez, who just recently was the vice president of Bacardi. Bacardi. Mm. Woo! And nice. then I have Charles uh, Simpson, <laughs> who was a, a vet. Who basically is a strategist for Coca Cola for over thirty eight years? Damn, wow. we got a good team. Yeah, and yeah. then I have Larry Layfield over here. Yeah, launching Which the, the market. Yeah, so yeah. it's a lot that's going to happen for two thousand eighteen. So there's a lot of we're going to do it right. So a product like that has to have professionalism. And has the right has that has the right team with it. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Yeah. So um, we're going to do some big big things. Dude, I'm super excited. Right. And me, I'm along with Larry, I'm another producer at Skip Eggs, and uh, I do a lot of the small to TV shows to features. I am a, anytime you, anytime I have the chance, I will put I'll, I'll product placement right there. I, nothing, you don't gotta give me nothing. Give me a product to put in there. I want to support you. 
Well, like no matter what, I don't. I you, love what you're doing. You. Um, yeah, it's more important to me yeah. to have that exposure and to really do that for the right reasons than it is a financial thing. Yeah, yeah. well, I just want to be make it accessible and mm. put it at a at a price where it's not. It doesn't have to be, you know, stupid. The money's there in volume. You know, what I'm mm-hmm. saying there's people that need it. Yeah, you know what yes. I'm saying I mean Larry can attest. I've I've literally given this, given a lot of the product away. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Just just to. Yep. Just to, for the benefit of, I mean, it's a for me personally, it's been a gift and a curse. Because mm. I mean, um, I've had situations where I'll be on the streets talking to somebody. I've actually had a woman come up to me and with tears in her eyes. Mm. She was like, I, "I take a chemo, yeah. and you don't understand what that water does for me. You don't know how understand how important it is." Yeah. And um, I'm finding out that you know, uh, it, it's a um, it's it's a again, it's a gift and a curse. Because mm-hmm. it's like I can't, I have to do this. There's, I, for me to go back to uh, If I was a Hey Ryan you gotta go work at Walmart I wouldn't be right You know what I'm saying nah, it's like that. I gotta do this You know what I'm saying So I, my heart and my soul is in this And it's like uh, There's a lot of people out there That want to take advantage of it You know what I'm saying And um, I, I think I think uh, I think we'll be alright Dude, the universe yeah. has chosen you to fulfill its destiny. Yeah. It's yeah. profound, man. Yeah. Like, one of my cousin, she's a dance choreographer, and her name's Miranda Davis. Shout out to Miranda. What's up, girl? Yeah. Um, but she was just on Dancing with the Stars, and she's a very, very famous, very successful choreographer. But um, nice. Julianne Hugh uh, portrayed her in a dance symboled around her life because she struggled with terminally ill diseases her whole life seizures, oh. cancer. I'm not, Miranda, I'm sorry, I can't remember all the lists, so apologize. But yeah. she, her, she had to do chemo for a lot of times, and she doesn't smoke. She never did before, but literally having uh, edibles and ways to ingest that yeah. saved her life. Wow! Like she, the reason she is in, alive today and uh, able to function and able to do all these great things, one hundred percent directly related to that. Wow. And that is a beautiful thing. You know, this is somebody. Talk about tearing up, man. This is somebody I love. She's my god sister. I've known her my whole life, so I've been close to this struggle. And, you know, it's another thing. My grandmother died of uh, breast cancer. She was a very big breast cancer survivor. My mom has skin cancer. You know, all these things that could... You know that that might have been preventable exactly. if, this, if this was around then. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's more than just... Yeah, hey, it's good for you. It's good for recovery. This, this is saving people's it's lives. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny today. I got a call from a friend of me and Larry have out in Chicago. Um, he called and gave me some, you know, some disturbing news. He said, "Look, my daughter uh, has a cyst in her ear. Hmm. She's been getting earaches for a while." And I'm like, Every time I talk, how your daughter doing? Oh, it's earache, earache. Hmm. So he said, he "Finally took her in. He's like, they found they had she has a cyst in her ear." Hmm. I'm like talking to him. I'm like, okay, I think I might know how to fix that. Hmm. <laughs> so I mean, it feels good for me to sit there and say there's some products that some stuff that I can put together to put in her ear to help and yeah. get rid of help with that. So I mean, um, it's the plant. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah, and it, it really is education on what it can do and how it's being used. Yeah, and the real issue with the, you gotta understand, it's, it's a, just in the room how you guys have it right now. It's a, it's ghosts and it's dreams. There's CBD and it's THC. Mm-hmm. So you have a, I don't know if you see the logo, how I have the, the G with the halo over it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the good side. You see what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. what the halo represents. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So it, it all okay. has a meaning. So. The yeah, the, the the CBD is the good for you. It okay. comes in health and you know doesn't trip you up headwise. But um, it it has allowed me to um go in and do certain things with the CBD that I can't do with the TAC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it's basically help people, man. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's if I can get some input, this is Larry. Um, I think you know Ryan. He's aware of this. I still love doing movies because it's fun. I enjoy it. It's a paycheck, yeah. but it's not. The same gratification working with him, mm. you know. So I feel like now I'm a doctor, which is mm. kind of odd. I get so many phone calls from people regarding the CBD, mm-hmm. you know. And like my grandma, she died from cancer. She was a doctor. Yeah, yeah. So she couldn't fight it and die. Yeah. So now it's like I feel like I'm obligated to help him. I met him the first day, and I was like, I'm on board, and I stopped everything. Which is weird. So, it, I mean, it affected my, my my money coming in. He's aware of this. But, you know, when, when you feel like you're a disciple to help people out, you mm-hmm. have to do this, you know, and that's that's where we're at now.
I love that attitude. That's how I am with this film. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm born and raised in Florida. I came, I went to college out here, and then I moved back to Florida for about a decade. And then I just moved back out here about a year and a half ago. The only reason I moved back out here is to make this film. Mm-hmm. I feel like I had a, a responsibility, a duty, that the universe basically said, here, here's this story. Now go off and do it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. As, when I do that, I'm like my ideal situation, man. I'll be living on an island in the Caribbean with a sailboat. I'm a sailor and a fisherman, man. Get me the fuck away from civilization. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Everybody in the city is crazy, but uh, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes because it's so important to me. And I feel like that's where you guys are coming from with this, you know, responsibility and this duty to share this great, healthy product. That's that. It's more than just a product, man. It's a, it's, it's a multitude of things. It's a yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, it's, but a, it's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. No, it, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's going to be the new your new vitamin. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and it's funny. We were talking before this. There's other there's other ones out there, man. Mm-hmm. There's other other ingredients out there. There's other <clears> stuff <throat> that help. help. And I have yeah. a whole line of them. So mm-hmm. right now, this is the now. And I have to introduce mm-hmm. things slowly. <laughs> Did you want to talk about anything else or no? Well, I you mean, keep that table it or yeah, I'll table it. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever look into, um, you know, being from Florida? We Florida's where people go to die. Yes. So, so there is so many retirement homes yes. and there's so much pharmaceutical stuff. We Florida had a pill epidemic, and we were talking about this before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if like if this kind of uh, culture could be brought to that. Think of the quality of life and the extension of life that so many people would be missing, you know? And, you know, Florida's crazy. I got to admit, we fuck up elections. We do a bunch of crazy shit. You always see something in the news from Florida. I get it. But one of the reasons is because everybody there is, first of all, I think it's the heat. But the other reason is, like, everybody's, I feel like, just, like, booze and pills. Like, so, I had a good friend of mine, uh, Lucas Beckenstein, passed away. From pills, he was fighting with addiction for years, and this was a crazy time in my life. I have he had the tattoo "Stay with Me" on his chest, and I have that on my arm right now as honor to him because I was depressed, uh, really depressed, and I almost ate a bullet twice. Mm-hmm. And it was him passing that showed me I don't have a right to take my own life because mm-hmm. he yeah. would want to be here. Mm-hmm. So I never again was I able to. Every time anything gets rough, I go, hey, yeah. at least you're not there. Exactly. Yep. But if this was available to him. I guarantee you, if it like it's, he smoked weed, but it wasn't legal, so it's still a crime. Mm-hmm. But you can get pills; those are legal. Yeah. You know, his he would still be here. I got some stories like that too. I have a story where um, a young gentleman was shot by the police mm. because he couldn't get no cannabis, Damn. and he kind of like he was mentally disturbed. And his uh-huh. family they looked down upon you know him taking the weed, hmm. so he was using cannabis to medicate himself to you know take care of his issues. And it was like, you need to stop messing with the cannabis so they prevent him from getting it. Hmm. So um, his particular family member, he got into a little tussle. Police was called to the house. Um, some things went awry. And then six hours later, out in the streets, they saw him and they shot him. Hmm. And it's like, when I think about it, it's like, he just needed the cannabis to ease his mind. Hmm. He was going through some issues. But, yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. They could still be here. And, you know, everybody reacts differently to different substances. But I think I think it should be required that every law enforcement officer and every politician do consume THC at some point in their life before holding that job. Right. I or think at least be educated on it fully. Yeah, you well, can you can be educated yeah, on it. Know. But, you know, I think officers and politicians, some are educated, but still educated in the wrong way. Yeah. Currently, well, it's the fear. Of, well, I mean, yeah, educated yeah. with real facts. I mean, once you know the whole facts of the situation, the facts that nobody's ever died in the history from the actual drug alone. You know, the worst case scenario is going to sleep. The only real stigma is the social, and then you know the the, the legal uh, reaction. Yeah. Uh, really, beyond that, there's no other stigma. You have less colds. You're healthier. The the daggone CBDs sneaking up inside, fixing other shit while your back's turned. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because, um, like you just said, I think the fear of the officers is you're intoxicated. I don't know what you're intoxicated of. Mm-hmm. Right. So, that makes a lot of sense. That's that's what it is. Their life is on the line. So it's like, okay, you high? Okay, maybe that's different. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what you... You acting funny. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, like, here in Cali is a unique culture because I've had... In, one of my best friends is a police officer here. Um, he's LAPD. <clears throat> but I've had previously, when I was in college out here back in like 06, 07, um, I would, uh, you know, I would be walking down the boardwalk at Venice 
and somebody would be lighting a joint right up there on the boardwalk, just walking by. And there's two LAPD patrol officers just walking by. Say, hey, what's up? Mm. I did that shit in Florida. People would freak yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, freak yeah, yeah. out. They would lock me in a cage yeah. for a certain amount of time, mm. slam me with a record for just walking down the street smoking a joint. Yeah. Like, and that, right, that I think... I think, like you said, man, it's it's a culture thing. I, when it comes to can, I understand the officers always needing to be aware of what somebody's intoxicated on. Mm-hmm. But if if it's a stigma to where, like, especially being from the South, man, it's like it's so like a drug culture stigma thing. Like you could drink yourself to death, you could smoke cigarettes, you you know, a uh, drunk person is more dangerous than a person that's high. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, so I, you know, what. In you know, it's a culture thing. We're talking about where are we going? What's your opinion on the politics of this? Where, where what's in the future for the cannabis industry? Well, it's funny you ask me. <laughs> are you kidding me? Let's Love drop it. it. You got some more <laughs> shit. Run. I'm gonna drink some more of this TSC. Mm. Love that dream. From looking at my little crystal ball, um, right now they're trying to figure out. It's a financial thing right now. So with sessions and and them, they it's kind of like. They have something. They're gonna have to release it. It's like let, we gotta let the dog out, okay? But look, when we let the dog out, is there a gate to contain it? Because if we let it out, it's gone. We can't control it. <laughs> so that's that's part of the problem with the politics right now, where it's like, okay, um, they're letting uh, like right now, there's raids going on right now. Um, that people actually have their paper and everything right with the city and federal raids, yeah, right? federal, federal raids. raids yeah. They're just coming in like, whoa. So it's like they give it to you, but they take it away. Mm-hmm. They watch you build it, and they, hey, we come and take that anytime. Ooh, Yo, D E A, D E A, chill out with that nonsense. Jack Wall Street. Yeah, so I mean, it's some, it, and it's all about how you threaten and um, how you threaten the the, the po- politics on it. Well, I think a big part of that, that you were leading to is the economics. Yeah, you know, we were talking earlier. This is it has the potential to cut out the financials from so many industries. Well, right now, healthcare. You, it, it's a everything. quick. Yeah, it's gonna healthcare. I mean, now you have uh, people self medicating themselves. Yeah. So it's like, hey, um, I'm, I'm dealing with a gentleman. Um, he has a company called E Medicine, and we were talking. He's, it's like the iPhone watch, mm-hmm. where it checks your vitals, your blood pressure, and, and all that. Oh, that's and awesome, awesome doctor. So hmm. now you you finish find cannabis doctors. Hmm. You know, cannabis has different strands that can yeah, you know heal different things. Yeah. Different things. So you know, um, it's gonna change. You know I mean, what what's the level of money that Colorado has already gained from taxing? They've gotten more. Money? Have they been able to put like millions of dollars into the school district? Yeah. A lower rate of D, uh, DUIs, lower rate of crime, yeah. yep. and one of the troubles that it's so for those of you out there who are not aware of the economics behind this, if you are in a state like Colorado where it's recreational legal, or even here in California where it's medically legal, you operate a business, you cannot put your cash into a bank. Be- because the bank doesn't want to be come after by the federal government for mm-hmm. <clears throat> for drug charges, yeah. for yeah. laundering drug money, basically, because yeah. it's still federally illegal. Yeah, schedule. You know, so that's a challenge from all these businesses, you know, having to operate. And, you know, that right there, say, like, look, legalize it, tax it, you're good. The government's going to get more out of it than it would by spending money on it, law enforcement goes, and enforcing mm-hmm. all this. It goes back to, is the government ready for it? That's the whole thing. Are they ready? Like, again, you got to let that dog out. Mm-hmm. Do we have our bases covered? Because that's money we can't get. Well, politics follow culture. I don't think it, 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 the, the, the well, government... Geez, if, politics if, follow the money. Yeah, no, he's that's right. That's very true. He's right. He's right. And, but, and we're forcing it to be moved now to where it's like, if you look at uh, Canada, different countries are now like, hey, well, if U.S. is going to wait, then we're going to take it. Yeah. So now, guess what happened with USA? It's like, hey, we're falling behind Canada. Canada's going hard right now. Mm-hmm. They're going real hard. They're out here fishing in the United States on, on yeah. product. Yeah. They're going super hard. I'm like, well, I'm Aren't they already a billion dollar industry there? Yeah, mm-hmm. but they finish, what is it, July they go live? July. Mm-hmm. They go live. Mm-hmm. And is, it, is there grows in Canada independent as far as like uh, businesses, small businesses, or is it state sponsored? It's, or both? I don't know how it, it works. It's, it's both, but what's going on now in, in and I mean, I'm giving the crystal ball again. Everybody's focusing on grow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, really, to be honest with you, you can grow, but what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has to go to product. Yeah. I'm just being honest with you guys. So, I yeah. mean, that's what I foresee. And that's why I'm like, okay, I'm in a great <clears throat> space. But I'm seeing a lot of people going to grow. 
Now, mm-hmm. I'm watching the growers now go through a, a thing, the, the indoor, the light depot, you know what I'm saying, the outdoor, you know what I'm saying, the where it's not really cost effective due to the indoor as much as it was before. It cost electricity mm-hmm. and this, that, and other. And it's like, now I'm seeing light depots starting to, you know, go up. But then we talk about quality. But what I know, when it cat comes off the bag, TAC levels are TAC levels. Mm-hmm. Your brain can only take so much. Mm-hmm. So somebody tells me I got 33, you know, MGs in this TAC level is 33. My brain's going to take 19. <laughs> right. So I'm not going to feel the 30. So it's like, but when people start getting that, then it's going to come down to, you know I'm saying, the products. Mm-hmm. I know, man, it's so great with everything you do. Where do you see, uh, like, what what do we need to do as consumers and as citizens to, what is the best way we can change this culture? It's, like, politics. And it's everything. getting educated. And um, it's funny when you talk about, we were talking about movies. Um, that movie that was out uh, um, was part two, the one I told you about, where um, oh God, the lady, uh, the kid from Britain, the first movie had Samuel Jackson in it. And uh, he was trying to take over the world. Kingsman. Kingsman. Yep. The second one. Did yeah, you see yeah. the second one? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, I watched so it. So that's really what this is. A, that movie was about was this. Hmm. It's about the cannabis president that we have in that's office. That's right. That she, big drug it, deal it's lady. The same. It's, yeah. a, it's the yeah. same. It was the same. Uh-huh. If you really look at that movie, it's the same message, same thing where it's like, hey. Hmm. And, and it, it kind of told the story of, of where we're kind of like going. They hmm. want to control it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it, it's, it's, it's going to get... The situation we're in with our, with, with our politics is is kind of scary. It's wild, wild west right now. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, you, you, I think you ask anyone in this room hmm. a year and a half ago, if we'd be in this fucking situation right now, nobody would have thought that. I no. didn't think it. I mean, I thought you know, I've always liked the possibility yeah. of it going this way, said, but man. as soon as uh, <clears throat> Captain Captain Crazy Hair man. got in the office, uh, you know, it was wild card. Mm-hmm. You couldn't predict anything. You know, but, but watch this. What if he was to pull this card? Because you got to stay out from what I see. It. Sessions is sitting over there saying he's holding it up. The mm. moment Sessions says, "Okay, let's go," how many people would be like, "Hey, he's cool now." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Mr. Forty Fifth. Yeah. I'm, I'm with, yeah, I'm that, down with him oh, now. Change, change yeah, it, everything. See what I'm saying. So I think that's a Trump card that he'll play mm-hmm. in the, in a minute here, real yeah. quick. Be like, "Hey, we opened it up." You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, oh, okay. He's going to wait now till cool. the next election and his approval rating if, if he needs to bump. Yeah. If he can make it to the next election. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, that's very true, man. Right. News is going out there. So it's kind of crazy. But yeah, I mean, it all plays a part into it, man. And it goes back to what you said from the beginning. That movie, they use it to control us. Mm-hmm. And now this this day and age, how we are in the movie you're trying to make, will free us from that. Mm-hmm. It's the thought. It, it's the mind. I think it's, it's fear. It, it, again, it is. It all stems from a fearful, uneducated point. Like, if you go, I, I got plenty of friends in Georgia and Alabama and Florida, and I go to some of their parents' house, and they were like, y- you don't smoke. Yeah, my grandfather is Cuban. Rest in peace. He just passed away. But he was you know, born and raised in Cuba, lived there. And when I got caught smoking weed in high school, he he goes, don't smoke weed. How dare you smoke weed, Devin? That's a poor man's drug. If you're gonna do anything, do cocaine. Uh, I go, what no. the fuck? Uh, I'm in high school. That's yeah, he goes, ideas. yeah. That's that's a rich man. Cause he was from a, like a wealthy family in Cuba yeah. before Castro. So like him and his friends go out, get drunk, and do blow. Yeah. And like he's like, no, 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 don't do that. That's a poor man's drug. How did, don't lower yourself to that level. That's a crazy cultural thing I to did, wrap your head did. around. All the Spanish cultures seem to do that. I don't. I haven't met a Mexican or a Puerto Rican or somebody uncle yet who don't get a little too drunk about that third beer. He don't be like, hey, homie, hey, yeah, let's go to the party, homie. Oh my god! I was like, dude, you're somebody's fucking grand uncle. What are you doing? We're at a quinceanera, for Christ's <laughs> sake! And he's slipping out back with a couple little baggies. Wow. So this is CBD powder. I was going to, yeah. All right. For those of you listening, Ryan just showed me on his phone um, uh, pallets of bags of what looked like white bags. And then one, he just showed me the back of a semi stack full. I thought we were talking about blood. I thought you were just dropping some some kilos on me, bro. I was like, what? And then, yeah, explain to everybody what that is. Because that was epically large. Again, that's the future. It's Mm. like right now, you guys are still on the grow and the wheat. Mm. We're already there. It's already a powder. Yeah. Yeah, we're already going there. Yo, you gonna so, use one of them Tesla uh, uh, trucks for uh, distribution now? Oh, those new trucks are nice. <laughs> those semi trucks? <laughs> yeah, yo, they yeah, dope. Yo, they dope. They're gonna put truckers out of business. By the way, five, yeah, twenty still, years, it's yeah. over. 
Yo, Elon, what's up, man? We got we got a partner here for you. Let's jump on it. Right. But yeah, nah, that's why I said I see the future where this is going. It just takes time for people to get educated to go to the next level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And again, we're fighting the whole seventies hippie thing, but reality is this is an epidemic for for health. Mm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm eating uh Mc, well, I'm not trying to say that bad on radio, but McDonald's and fast food mm. and it's tearing us up Killing as us. as people, mm. but we don't have nothing to come back and correct it. So, I mean, the simple product is, it's in front of you. It's water. The thing that I get from a lot of people is, you, you want water. The, the funny thing that me and Larry see a lot when we go out um, is people reach for this before soda and alcohol now. Hell yeah. It's weird. I can't tell you the last time I had a soda, by the way. It, yeah. It's getting kind of weird. So, it's like um, the wellness conscious is coming, but you have to have those products that are set up for people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's some stuff. And my thing is, I've had a lot of well, this stuff that's good for you, but it tastes bad. You know yeah. I just can't yeah. do that's it. That's that philosophy, like, like a kale shake. Yeah. I can't, I, I, <laughs> like, yeah, it's good for you, but come on, you're eating I grass. Can't, <laughs> I can't I can't do it. You know, um, it's funny. I just had a meeting with um, some of my colleagues, and, and he was talking about Jack in the Box first of the year. You know, people were concerned about their weight. He was like, Ryan, wouldn't it be cool if uh, Jack in the Box had a, a, a shake, a no-fat shake, that you can actually pull in the Jack in the Box and get a uh, you know what I'm saying Slim shake And I'm like Okay cool I put some CBD in it You know what I'm saying <laughs> So it's like and, and I could do that So it's kind of like It's, it's, it's funny Because mm-hmm. now people Are starting to be Health conscious mm-hmm. You know it's like We went out And did a lot of damage To our bodies but How do we fix it mm-hmm. You know we're at a day and age here Where I'll sit The kids They sit down And they don't want to go outside And play no more mm-hmm. So I mean We're riding away You know what I'm saying in, in, in this world But we don't have nothing That can actually fix it I think the education of the science behind it is the huge tipping point because like if you, you know, I use Timothy Leary as an example because back during the 60s, you know, he was the acid king, LSD king basically, but he spread it culturally and didn't allow the testing for the science to be done and it scared the stigma of the culture Mm -hmm. and it's what pervaded him like that right there or psilocybin can be used for like post-traumatic stress for a multitude of different things cluster headaches like all kinds of seizures all kinds of stuff but uh they didn't they they forced that illegalness because the science wasn't there it's like they jumped the gun they went straight to the recreational without backing it up with hard evidence it's illegal to make money off of it if i i mean that's really what, what you say politics look we can't make money off of it yet so you can't beat us to it you know what i'm saying and then <sighs> And then to be honest with you, what I just showed you, understand what's going on. THC is for the right culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? CBD is something totally different and new. Yeah, it's for everything. CBD, non-intoxicant, healthy benefits. THC, toxicant and healthy benefits. Or but, intoxicant, but, but that's see, what I meant. You know? Again, you when I made dreams, I still, you know, New Year's Eve is coming up. The holidays is coming up. People go get alcohol. You gotta take a, a risk of getting hit. Uh, you know, car. Uh, just, just a lot of stuff with alcohol. Alcohol poisoning. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, even yeah. with this right now, you you feel good. You you're in a good spirits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what I want to make with this product. And that's what I saw with TAC. Yeah. Again, I'm not somebody that, that gets high. I, I I just don't. Yeah. But I can drink, take the CBD, and and fix you know whatever elements that I have. Mm-hmm. And occasionally, like we 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 make some. Uh, we made some chips. I actually made, mm. <laughs> made some. I, sh- I could have brought you guys. So we made some uh, tortilla chips. Bro, I will consume anything you give me at this and point. <laughs> the funny part about these tortilla chips that we made, you can't stop eating them. And, and mm. I was making them when I was actually, you know, formulating making this. Me and my buddy, we, we sat there and ate a whole bag. And mm. I got I got high. Mm. But I wasn't tore up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I was like, okay, so this is what it feels like to be high. Mm. You know, I didn't smoke weed, but it's like, okay. I was cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I've been in situations where it's like um, uh, in a room full of smoke with Snoop and some other guys and contact high, and it's like, oh, okay. That's just not you me. You just name dropping everybody, bro. I love you. <laughs> but I mean, Chilling with Snoop, that's a bucket list for me. I want to smoke weed with Snoop. Don't so, I mean, but it's like you um, you got to make it uh, accessible to each and all. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's really what my premise is. Again, from the beginning, I'm just here to help. Dude, that is amazing. And one of the things I was actually going to comment on is I have a strict policy of not smoking before the show. Because when I smoke, um, THC to me 
always it's an inward thing like i smoke and i i don't like to output information like i don't like to write i like to receive information i like to learn do research watch a movie watch a documentary those types of things oh. it kind of makes me get a little quiet and that's why like i remember one of the first test shows that we did i did smoke yeah. and then i came on the show and i said like five words so oh. they got from my other host but as you could tell I've been drinking this shit the whole time, and I'm feeling tipsy, and I can't shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're <laughs> so, kind of chatty, yeah. It's gonna be, yeah, yeah. I love it though. It's right. a totally different feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a positive. It's it's refreshing, yeah. surprisingly. Yeah. And you know, I just, I just well, can't wait till you try it like again. And you and I mean, you can put it in anything. We made ice cream with it. We made mm. quite a few things with that. And I mean, um, that's one of my. I'm, that one I'm actually going for the alcohol. Use a mixologist, so that's the one right there. Where you want to mix it with your vodkas and your yeah, drinks. Yeah, and, and it, it's, like going, sl- it's like slow gin. It's like yeah, a version yeah. of slow gin and yeah. whatnot. What yeah. about? Have you learned about um, infusing actual spirits with THC? Yeah, because okay. I I wanted to do that at my house, and I'm I'm I go, a, but I haven't done it yet. Air. I'm gonna put this in the air. I'm gonna tell. I guess I'm gonna put it out there. I I'm gonna do an alcohol. Yo, yeah. and this alcohol, I'm just going to say it straight up. This alcohol um, won't give you no hangovers. God nice. damn. Nice. Oh, my God. That's going to be the future. God so, damn. That's I amazing. I just drinking with no alcohol. So, yeah, me and another constituent that I have, uh, we we got this down. It's going to be kind of crazy. How we mm. do this. Like I told you, man, I was a brand rep for distilleries. I worked on the floor. I know how to make some shit. You need some help. Yeah. You give me a call, brother. Okay, I'll, I'll plug in. I'm plug and promote. I know how to mix that uh, spirits. I we um, I worked for St. Augustine Distillery in Florida. Shout out St. Augustine. Love you guys. Um, but that's where I learned the science behind distillation. And it re- that was more like I didn't really drink liquor before that. I drank beer. You know, I was kind of oh, craft beer, regular beer, whatever. And then I got into the science of distillation. And I was like a little alchemist. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah. I, you know, I studied alchemy too, actual from mm. like Newton and medieval times, but it's a mm. reference point to this. But it, that's what was entertaining to make like, oh, this is how gin's made. Mm. This is how whiskey goes. Oh, this is why this one, like you give me a brand of spirit and most likely I could tell you how they made it and who made it. Like very specifically, like did they use this type of still, that type of still? Did they age it? A lot of distilleries contract their equipment out to other brands. Mm -hmm. So like some of them that you wouldn't even guess, you're like, oh, I think this vodka comes from this place. You know, nope, it's like one big warehouse that makes five different ones. Mm -hmm. And then the history behind all of the distillation of spirits fascinated me. You know where vodka came from, where gin first came from, origins of whiskey. I um speaking of movies. Uh, should I tell the story? Fuck it. Um, so while I was working at St. Augustine, I found out about a guy named Bill McCoy. Bill McCoy was this boat owner in Florida. And during Prohibition, he's the guy who invented rum row. Mm. So he would take his ship. It was a fishing vessel, like a, a, a schooner. So like a two mass sailing boat. He'd take it to the Bahamas, load up his whole cargo with crates of alcohol, and then sail it up to Long Island and Jersey and sit um, a mile or no, I think it was three miles offshore in international waters mm-hmm. and basically have like an open bazaar. So gangsters and whoever and smugglers yeah, and go okay. fast bros would come out. They would buy it legally. Mm-hmm. The Navy couldn't do anything. The Coast Guard couldn't do anything. This man is, first of all, directly responsible for that international water being extended to mm-hmm. I think it's 15 miles now, 15 mm-hmm. or 20. Um, but also he's responsible for the galvanization of our uh, Coast Guard. Mm. We had uh, he, the Coast Guard could not catch him so much for years that they had to start building steel ships with faster engines. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, wow. he, he was notorious for um, never cutting his spirits and diluting them. Mm. He, he, because other people did. They would, exactly. you know, it's, it's yeah, an illegal exactly. substance now. Yeah, yeah. So they ran it down. So, you know, the term the real McCoy? Mm-hmm. Well, when, okay. yep. Whenever you bought your spirits from Bill McCoy, you knew you were getting the real, real stuff. McCoy. So it was a real McCoy. Like he wasn't going to screw you over. He modeled himself after um, Samuel Adams in the Sons of Liberty. Mm. And he called himself an honest lawbreaker. Because I don't know if you guys know this, John Hancock was an importer of spirits back when we were still a British colony. And the British taxing him, he was very wealthy. He teamed up with like the local gang leader, Sam Adams, and his brother, John, I guess, and a couple other misfits. And they started smuggling booze into the states into boston Mm -hmm. and the 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 revolutionary war was paid for by the smuggling of alcohol Mm -hmm. isn't that one of the main things isn't that crazy i mean so is kennedy's family they got all that shit exactly you know but this prohibition thing you know we talk about that era 
hemp was mandatory to grow on your on yeah. your land. Washington. Hmm. Most yeah. of our founding fathers yeah. all have cannabis use. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, they be getting high and look at all the great country they started when they did so. Yeah. Well, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Best country in the world, in my opinion. So far. Yeah. So far. So I far. Think, until I think Carl had, Carl had too much dreams over there. Oh, okay. yeah. I was over here cruising. Yeah, well, see, you know, because <laughs> that, well, you know, Devin's story was serious to the motherfucker, too. He took us to Jersey back. We was in Afghanistan for 20 minutes during that story. Then we went back to 1920, moved over to 1940, went through the prohibition, went through the crash in the goddamn 20s, came back through, went through Reaganomics, then goddamn George Bush came through the housing crash, Obama, now we at Trump. That's how that story That's how long that story took As long as it took me To get back to say The shit I just said But it's so good I got You feel relaxed and, and this is what it's about It's yeah, about chilling yeah. and, and this is what it does It's, it's bringing right. people together that's You know it. It's like you know, Same reason you would Go hang out with your family You talk mm-hmm. about it on the holidays mm-hmm. This is a great thing To bond with yeah. people You know those conversations You know there's a, When I drink sometimes If somebody pisses me off I'm gonna be a little bit More vocal about it mm-hmm. yeah. Somebody pisses me off on this It is like Water off the back Just Thank let it roll know. off Like man I'm, yeah. I'm good, man. I, s- I love you, man. I love you. That's yeah. all good. Well, you if, know? I could, if I could say something, too, because I know I, this is a family here. Like, Ryan's is now part of my family. Mm. Get back to part of my family. Yes. So, you know, we had a few issues in the past with a few individuals with skip bags. Mm. And now we're coming a lot stronger this year. Yeah. And mm-hmm. everyone in this room is a part of what we're doing. Yeah. Ryan mentions skit bags probably every week. Mm. Nice. Shooting a skit. Oh, yeah. Shooting a commercial. Mm. Constantly. So anything you need, you let me know. I got you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I got to help. I got to get this stuff out. Whether yeah. it's funny, uh, dramatic, the, it's, it's all content. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It, 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 needs a, it needs a voice. Yeah. See what I'm saying? We have, we're working on some pilots, and I'll just throw it in there. It'll yeah. take place in modern day. Yeah. Shot here in LA, mm-hmm. you know. We could whatever. I'll let you know off air what we got going on, and you could just decide. You could be like, "Yeah, I'll do that." Look here, throw this ghost in there, throw dream in there, whatever the yeah. fuck you want, man. Yeah. I'm I, I'm here. I want to help people. Yeah, I'm here to help. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah, so dude. Good about it. You got anything yeah. else you want to you want to <laughs> talk about? We can sit here and chat, man. I'm not trying to end this if you don't want to. Yeah. I was just like, nah, just um, I'm I'm 2018 is gonna be interesting. Be very interesting. It's gonna be a lot of changes. Um, hopefully, uh, a lot of people will get through it. It's gonna be a lot of ups and downs. You know, I think that at the end of 2018, we'll be fine. We'll, we'll know more of where we're supposed to be. Because right now, we're going through a situation where we're finding out real from fake. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and we're going through that real hard within uh, our government. We'll find out fake stuff that's going on, and it's gonna affect what. Our daily lives are so. In a minute, you're gonna have to reach for something that's gonna, you know, hey, this is too serious. I gotta lighten my, you know, my sensitivity level here. So mm-hmm. I gotta need something. So people are either gonna start abusing more the harder drugs because they know how to deal with stuff, mm-hmm. or they're gonna have to find something that's gonna um, help them get through the times. Yeah. So it's either through entertainment, you know, what I'm saying movies, uh, music, and um, you know. Hopefully, I'm already known the cannabis, but mm-hmm. 2018 is going to be a lot of introduction to cannabis. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see that that happening a lot. Well, yeah. that's amazing. Well, mm-hmm. you're certainly tip of the spear here, brother. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I'm glad after meeting you and hearing all the stuff you're doing, even how you know perf- articulate and wise and smart you are. Like, mm-hmm. there, I, you got this. It's like a layup. No problem, oh, bro. Oh, yeah. You know, like I have every vote of confidence. I got every belief. In you and your prize. I believe in you. And because of that, I believe in your prize. Yeah. You know? Like, I trust you. I believe in you and your mission and your statement. So, if you tell me th- this dream right here does this, this, and this, like, 100% agree with it. If you tell me ghost, you know, CBD does this, this, and this, 100% agree with it. And I think that's what's lacking. We talk about education and culture. We need people like you on the forefront. We need people like you delivering that message. Because if, you know, it's like a sales position. If you try to sell something, you're really trying to sell yourself at some point, you know, but that's part of it. But well, I th- you know, people. Do you are- guys have any uh, spokespeople any- uh, yet or anything like you. that you're messing with? Oh, well, <laughs> well, you know, I'm screaming from the top of the buildings and whatnot, but you know, that make people run inside usually. It's um, it. it's it's uh, again, I gave you my team of professionals. We we have some people that um, that are gonna come in. Okay. Some celebrities. We we it's gonna. It, it, it should. What do you think, Larry? It's gonna it's gonna do pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I was telling Larry yeah. when I first heard about it because um. 
Buckshot Shorty, the old rapper, he, you know, he has uh, epilepsy and stuff. And he says he, he really doesn't smoke weed to get high. He smokes it for the CBDs because it helps oh, him yeah. with it. And then like a month or two later, like, he was like, yo, I'm messing with this ghost water CBD. I was like, yo, I just heard. You know, and so it's like probably a lot of people like entertainers and stuff out there that just have health issues and stuff well, like that. They're well, see, one thing like I got to get you. Good. Let me give you a little feature of what we're going into. Yeah. We're going into foods. When I say foods, I'm doing your, your ketchup. Mm. Your salad dressing, mm. your cornbread mix, your your pancake mix, your cake, your your soup. Mm. I'm going in everything, so it goes with the name Ghost. Mm. So we're doing. We got uh, it's a lot. It's a it's kind of a lot. Toothpaste, almost like you walk through the whole supermarket looking no, for the no, little ghost no, no, on no, no, the no. corner of a box we, to know we, that you're getting we, that CVD. We thing. already we cover that. Uh. We already we already cover that. We already. Um, Put it this way: How would you like to go to Disneyland and get a CBD corn dog? Right. I mean, it, it can happen. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Go to Mimi's uh, Cafe and yeah. get the CBD pancakes. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we that's the space I'm going into. Yeah. So it's, it's cool. like the salad just I'm yeah. So I'm not just doing cute edible candies and brownies. I'm not mm. doing that. Mm, so I'm yeah. actually trying to heal people. Mm, yeah. Jello. So you see the big picture. I'm in it. Yeah. And that's that's what the difference is. A lot of people like. Especially, you know, stereotypical stoner culture. Like, yo, man, let me make these brownies yeah, and yeah, just yeah. do it at my local yeah. dispensary. Yeah. No, nah, I, what I love that you're doing is the same philosophy I have. And this is the reason why I'm making this movie. It is changing people's lives on a big scale. Yeah. It's what Elon Musk does with Tesla, mm-hmm. you got right out oh, there. No, no, is yeah. it, th- Those are the type of people we need. That's, that's what my council elders. Mm-hmm. If I got a council of elders I'm choosing, you guys. You guys are on it, for Wait, sure. So let me ask you a question because I think this is why... I'm so focused on this. Is if I die today, what am I leaving on this earth besides my children? Mm-hmm. I think people focus on if I die, I have my kids. Okay, but I can have a kid tomorrow. Yeah. But besides that, what are you doing to make an impact yeah. in the world? Yeah, you know, can't take that bank account with you. Yeah. You can't. It, it doesn't really matter. That's just to get you through the day. It's yeah. a tool. Think about, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a means to an end. Yeah, yeah. You so, know? I mean, you know what Larry said is true. Yeah. Um, that's my biggest fear. It's like I, I it got to be seen, it got to be heard, and it's not even, it's not even about me on, on the ego tip. It's not about me. And some of the guys that's been with me through this beginning journey mm-hmm. to now, they know that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a given person, mm-hmm. and um, I got to let ghosts do what it do. I, like I told you, it's a gift and a curse for me. You know what I'm saying some people look at it as like, oh, they assume certain things about oh, about yeah. me. They always assume the bigger you get, then, you know, the hate is a sign of your great. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And it's like, dude, um, there's, I love for somebody else. It's not even a matter of competition. If you come for competition, great. That means we're doing something. Huh? Yeah. We, we, you know, what I'm saying, long, if it's about money, dude, great, whatever. But we got to go take care of this situation. Yeah. It has to be done. Yeah. I agree, man. Yeah. So. Well, dude. Is there anything out there the listeners can do specifically to support you? Um, you know, I'm going to say this. Educate yourselves on the product, whether it's you buying it from me or somebody else. I just want you to be, be better than what you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? CBD. Yeah. Um, my job, me personally, is to make a better product for you to like and enjoy it. So as long as I do my job, that's all I need to care about. Yeah. Yo, everybody out there, stay away from them shady products you don't know nothing about. Because I know I heard from a, a, another comedian talking about it. He's... um. Greg Fitzsimmons, he's been a uh, year sober, like 20, 30 years sober, and he tried a CBD product mm. from somebody, and it had traces of THC in it, and he got high, oh. and he freaked out. Ooh. So you got to know your source, man. Oh, yeah. Make like, sure that's kind clean. of a thing going yeah. around. They're not doing the proper yeah. science, and they're labeling it as something that is yeah. not. Well, and, it's Wild Wild West, so you yeah. go out here, and you just do what you do, yeah. and... And, yeah. Well, if it was fucking legal, yeah, right. And you <laughs> the guys government got up their ass, right. And you guys are already getting it in stores and stuff too. I seen yeah, it was yeah, like Seven yeah. Eleven, and you got yeah. the vending machines, yeah. and oh yeah, and we, all that that's stuff gonna too. Be, and that's another thing. I mean, the vending machines. Uh, we see. I kind of see the future on that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's another debatable thing. But you guys are gonna see this stuff in all your stores. Yeah. So it's kind of like the the dispensaries. Mm. They're cute, but I know what you mean. You mean like the almost like you know how they got the no GMO symbol on every food you look at now. There almost be like there's a CBD symbol. You yeah, know exactly. What I mean? That's what you're everything. looking for. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's what you're gonna be. And you're gonna be looking for that in your products. Be like, hey, does this contain CBD? Yeah. And you be like, okay, cool. I'm good with it. Yeah. I know it's nice. ten times better. Nice. It's kind of like when you see we drink Minimaid. It's like it has 
two percent fruit juice. Mm-hmm. You drink it, it's two percent. Come on, man, I can't mm-hmm. feel no two percent. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, but well, it's in there. It's yeah. in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the purpose of ghosts. It's in there, yeah. and it, it'll, it'll take care of you. It. I'm not saying it's. Uh, I'm not saying it'll heal you or anything, but. Yeah, but it's- you have an option that is in there. Yeah, yeah. It's a good additional component. You exactly. know what I mean? Everything is always pieces. Exactly. And it's a good piece. And that's what I'm saying. It, what I need people to do is educate themselves on it. Don't be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Embrace it. Yeah. I've seen it. it. Here's the funny thing. I've seen this product. Well, I've seen some products um, given to animals. My mm-hmm. dog. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, he can't speak. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so when you see uh, an animal... Affected by it, then you know you got something that's real. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it, it, it's just, uh, it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of fun. It's, it's kind and Larry be with me, and, and I do it. I, I cooked some food for him one time, and he was like, "I, I ain't gonna cook no more." It's, it's just uh, the certain things. I mean, uh, yeah. I did some stuff, some combinations. I just think out the box, man. Nice. I, I really think out the box. Well, we need more humans like you, man. Yeah. We need out of the box thinkers. We need leaders and compassionate, smart humans yeah. that really have a, their heart in the right place, man. Um, I'm, I'm feeling this right now. <laughs> you see me? I just got quiet and I like it. I like that shit. Thank you. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, is there anything else you want to go over? No, nah, I'm good, man. Just I just wish the best and happy, you know, happy New Year and happy holidays and everybody be safe. Oh, well, thank you, man. Dude, it has been an honor and a yeah. pleasure having you on. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Um, let everybody out there know where they can find you. You got social media. You got a website. What do you want to plug? Anything? Well, we got, um, look out for um, ghostwellness.com. It'll be coming out soon. Um, again, we're in the transition stage where we're going to introduce ourselves to the world. So just be on the lookout for ghosts. You're going to see it. It's coming. So you hear that, Emily? It's coming. Yeah. It's a coming. I and love also, it. Skip Bags is a part of it. So regardless of whoever says they're not, mm-hmm. they're going to be a part of this. We're working on a big deal with a couple of big-time investors. And we're going to come in and hire a bunch of folks. I like yeah. the sound of that. Mm-hmm. Like hire. Hire well, means pain. That's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You got my number. Exactly. <laughs> so if you ain't down, right. bye bye. That's right. Get down and lay down, bro. Yeah. I'll go down. Mm-hmm. There you want to plug Thank in your social media or anything? Any, anything uh, you specifically no, want? Projects? No, right? okay. no, no. Just, just shooting. I'm actually shooting this uh, YouTube project this week. Um, I think it has 136 million followers. Nice. As right. far as the amount of people attached to it. Shooting that. I'm staying busy, man. Like I said, my focus is, is mainly just being his brother. We're brothers. It's pushing forward, man. Word. That's all. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Carl, you want to tag out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Always it's uh, Poppy Carl on Instagram, uh, Mr. CD Enforcer, uh, Google it and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Always check out the Ding Dong Show every Monday at 1030 on YouTube and at the Comedy Store. Uh, check out the new Phil Scramble coming out on December 26th. It's dropping on iTunes. Got to get that. And uh, look out for future stuff coming from the skit bags because we coming. We like Puff Daddy. Can't stop. Won't stop. Take that. Take that. <laughs> we going to be so annoying Monday, yo. <laughs> I love it. And uh, you can find me. First of all, shout out to our, our, our buddy Neil, who is usually yeah, on the show with us. Yeah, He's usually yeah, up Paul in this seat. He, uh, he got he, too litty last night, apparently. Yeah. Oh, really? I thought I he was like a sick man. He, ta- I, he was like, he told me he was sick. I was what like, fuck, he got a cold. He, Neil, are you just hung over? Well, I'm just saying. He's he going to listen to this. He's going to be one editing. At two it. in the morning, they was gorilla pimping people for $150 cash. Mm-hmm. That's all I know. Yeah. So, Neil, so, you sleep bro. gorilla pimping at 2 a.m. and then you ain't here the next day. It's how you got wow. litty as fuck like you was turned up on yeah. little Lottie, little Yachty. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? That's fine. Anyways, it's all good. I, I hope you feel better, brother. And yeah. uh, th- thank you guys for being here. We, we, we got through it. Uh, I think this was a fucking amazing show. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at Sailor underscore Dev. And more importantly, you can follow the show on Twitter, right. Skip Bags Radio. It's right. at Skip Bags Radio. Or if you want to email the show, you got some love, you got some hate. Whatever, fired our way. It is uh, skitbagsradio at gmail.com. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. And we're up. Skitbags Radio.